Next piece in line is the cross slide casting and the only surfaces other than the obvious geometric surfaces that you see, the T-slot and the dovetail. And there's a little hole in the back with a counterbore spot face on both sides, I believe. This entire piece, and you can see how big it is, has got draft angles everywhere. Sides are draft, ends are draft. So squeezing it conventionally is basically out of the question. The other thing that makes it out of the question is the draft angle high spots are the corners. So as you pass the cutter through here and this wall became the supporting material, it would probably not only choke the cutter and blow the slot, but it may actually lift and just explode everything because you're going to lose your grip on it. So take a piece like this and give it a good look-see, compare it to the pictures, just compare it to everything and any reference material you can find and figure out what we're going to do. Now one of my favorite sayings, and you guys should write this on the wall, when the chip exceeds the grip, you can bet the part will slip. And that just boils down to, if you're holding on a sixteenth of an inch worth of a piece, uh, a quarter of an inch long, and you hit it with a two inch end mill, chances are the end mill is going to win that battle because the grip just does not encompass as much surface material as the cut. So my plan on this guy right here is to put a gripping feature on top of this right here because this is considerably thicker than it needs to be. There's about an eighth of an inch material left right here and I have to believe they did that for a reason. I'm going to put a square on top of this and getting back to what I just said, if you were to hold it this way, you could see how minimal that grip would be. It would be very small. The surface area of the grip area would be very small. So when you came through with the dovetail and the end mill coming across the bottom, you could potentially overwhelm that. And that's the last thing I want to see. So I'm going to cut my slots or my tabs in profile this way, hold it this way, and that way when I drive the cutter through here, not only is the grip perpendicular to the direction of the cut, it's actually got a substantial footprint and the possibility of it lifting, although it's still there, is greatly reduced. Man, that was a mouthful. All right, let's pop this thing in. The, I'm going to push it up against the sander, knock the ugly off of it. I'm going to use a file to take some of the high spots off because there are high spots. And then I will delicately squeeze it across the bottom, put the tabs on or the steps then we'll invert it and do all the work from the bottom. Dovetail. Last video. Let's do it. Let's put the rails on there, or the cutout, so we can grip it. If you're following along with this, this material is very soft. And this Kurt Vice could crush this thing like a pretzel, so gentle. Squeeze it just enough to have confidence in it and let it go. Let's see what we get. Part is 392 thick. It's about 10 millimeters. It's got to take it down to three, or excuse me, 492, which is about 12.7. Got to take it down to 375, just under 10. So I'm going to leave myself a little bit of material. I'm going to take off about two millimeters, two and a half millimeters.
Okay, not only did I just create two very nice parallel surfaces to grip on, I also created built-in parallels. When I invert this piece, I can bank on that surface right there. And the bottom of this part should be relatively flat. Still not a super way to hold it, but in the presence of all this draft, we take our time. Chances are we're going to get lucky. If it blows up, I'll show you. I promise. Second vise is loaded in the primary vise, and anytime you use a vise in a vise, if you're like me, you're just anytime the spindle turns off, time to remove the part, you go for the main handle. Take the main handle off. That way you won't make the mistake and lose your whole setup. Putting the part in. Nice parallel surfaces to grip on. Built-in parallels. I am going to cut this right to left so it's more of a downhill push on this instead of left to right where it may have a tendency to lift it. Let's go with that logic and see how that works out. I am staying slightly off center. Only because there's a V notch in the check or in the vice shawl, you can see it right there. And if you put this part over that V notch, you've effectively reduced the contact on that side. And that's not what I'm looking for. Sweep it real quick, find the middle. And anytime you're Indicating a part with a draft on it. It's very much like indicating a cylinder. Sweep it left to right and then sweep the high spot. And since I have a center feature on my digital readout, this will be relatively easy. Pick a random number, sweep it back and forth, look for the low. with it. Watch where it drops off. Okay, I would say we are right there. Come back around for zero. Sweep it. Then we come up. Zero. It's going to drop off. There you go. Zero the y-axis right now. And coming around the back side. Don't even care what's going on. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the back side. I guess you can almost see that. Shut off that other light, see if you can't see it. Let's just do it. Looking for the low spot. Coming up. table to the zero position from the previous setting. Do not move the indicator. Or you lose all your numbers. The ones you get. Center line function and hit the Y. Back to 126. See what happens. We should be pretty close to where we want.
Official channel, 130 deep, 356 wide. Keep your fingers crossed, hold your breath. Here. I'm going to set this tool by running a cut across these surfaces here. Zero out the Z. Go down to my finish. Off we go. I got to say, they didn't leave you a whole lot of meat on this casting. That's a fact, Jack. All right. About three thou away. to win while in this orientation it's probably a good idea to put the lead screw half nut features in since everything is already zeroed out might as well let's change over to a drill chuck grab the tools I'll be right back once you change over to the drill chuck we're going to put the hole in that will accept the half nut for lead screw. I'm going to add a little something different here, a little something, something different going on, because I know what the other part looks like. Simply edge find from here in, use the same zero from the slot, put the hole through the part. Now it is the far side that calls for a 3 16 diameter spot face and that's for the 256 nut that's going to attach to the stem that goes through that hole. The part that's going to have that stem on it is going to be a square and when you tighten down the nut you may have a tendency to torque the square. So I'm going to put a small 3 16 channel about halfway down the center of this just to register the square material as it seats. Whatever the depth of that channel is, I will add it to the dimension on the print for the offset of the hole. 
All right, now since this is such a superficial cut, I am going against every fiber of my existence by doing this. But this material is just like clay. And this is a razor sharp two flute carbide engine. This extremely superficial channel will hold the square material in line when I torque down the stud that's connected to it. I'll show you the drawing. This will be about 15,000 steep max, and I'm going to go just beyond that center of that hole. And yes, I'm holding it in a drill chuck. Dear God, don't ever tell anybody I did that. Let's get a little in-process shot of it. The top square will be removed. That's where the T-slot's going to go. So if they left it, I'm using it. And when I put this back in there to spot face that, I will put a pin in the drill chuck. Put a clamp on here, remove the pin from the drill chuck, and spot face it. I will not squeeze this this way. You do your risk in collapsing that. That is really delicate right now. That is a minimal spot face for the nut that will hold the feature that holds the cross <laughs> the lead screw. It's got to be just very superficial and I am clamping on a shim so that it does not hit the bottom and distort those dovetails. If the shim looks like it's lifting, it's because the chamfer on the bottom is a saw cut edge and it was just pressed against the sander so it's the chamfer that makes it look like the far side is lifting right there because i know somebody's going to say something but trust me that's flat let's take a quick look at the adjusted setup for the cross the t-slots i have some mini clamps on either side of this part holding it in line this clamp primary clamp for the spot face i just did has not been unloosened i have a delrin shim underneath the new clamp and those rails that you put on there in the first operation for doing the dovetail on the bottom come in real handy right now for a quick double check of the alignment. Certainly not necessary, but if you're going to do it, why not go all the way? Because someday somebody's going to take it apart and check it and say, and, uh, you know, nice job. hundred years from now when they dig it up in some excavation somewhere. All right. Make sure that your new clamp is tight before this one is removed. Make sure whatever you put on either side will allow you the depth of the feature that you're going to put through there. So do not register everything from the top of the part. You've got to register from that step right there. Then it goes further down. I'll put the camera right behind the part just like this because that's a great camera angle. And we'll get this done. Oh, plus your little part. This is the surface that I'll mill down to. Go about three beyond. So it's really helpful to know how thick this part is before you start. 
going to deck the top off with the same cutter I'm going to make the slot in the top with just to save time. So what I've done is I've taken the machine out of gear and I will rotate this end mill to the point where the flute tips are in line with the x-axis and you can see you can get a very good visual on the alignment left to right. I'm going to move the table, zero my, my uh, digital readout on this edge, I'll move the table back to digital readout zero on this edge, split the difference and that will put me back on center. Drop the table a couple thousandths when you do this so you don't chip your cutter or scratch your part. I'm going to be using the same T-slot cutter I used on the face plate on this particular slot and they are not the same but for sake of not having to make two form tools I'm going to make it the same. You have to drive the T-slot from the bottom of the feature. I'll point that out in a minute but we need an 070 thick bottom with an 075 thick cutter so we got to go five thou deeper to make sure the upper edge is in the same spot. I'm going to go get a gauge pin, make sure that is a 156 slot before I proceed. Using the same T-slot cutter as I use for the face plate, I am going to register off the bottom of this slot, shift the cutter side to side, 031. I guess it's about 0.8 millimeters, and we're going to end up with a 156 uh, upper with a 188 lower. That is really small. Human finger. Oof. <laughs> God, I love it. Oh, that's a beautiful thing right there. Get this out of the way. That's all you can ask for right there, so long as that T-nut slides back and forth in that groove, 
you're in. If for some reason you make a mistake and the top of this T-nut is higher than the top of the slide, uh, chances are it may not seat properly when you tighten everything down. So just take a little bit off the top of the T-nut and you'll be fine. But what we have right here is the ideal situation. You want this surface higher than this so that they pinch when you tighten it down. Next piece I'm going to be doing is the cross slide nut. My 094 is going to grow a little bit because I made some changes to my cross slide. I got to add about 21 thousandths to this because the nut itself will be recessed into the bottom of the slide and that original surface was 5 thou different than the print. So if you start making changes, make sure you record those changes and don't get caught. I am going to single point this because I just love a challenge. Let's set the camera up. Do it. Beauty. Okay, let's get to the mill.
So I had this cross feed screw threaded on the one side. All I did was put it in the mill, tapped the 540 left hand hole through it, and then parted it off in the lathe in the same setup that I single pointed it in. Then I just used the corner round cutter and put the rounds on, blended it off with some emery. That's all she wrote, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Full Pie Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.